some more work and research are to be done by civil society organizations to avert failures and violence ahead of the elections. But civil society organizations have always played important roles in sensitization, citizen participation in Nigeria's elections. To this end, with the elections just days away, an observation report has been released based on the analysis of pre-election issues uh, and other issues as well. The research was conducted by 822 long-term observers employed in each of the 774 local government areas in Nigeria. The goal, according to the observer group, is to facilitate evidence-based election planning and policy. Well, joining us is a representative of the observer group, Yagi Africa, a civil society organization, the person of Cynthia Mbamalu. Well, actually, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Lunchtime Politics and ask that um, this is the third in a series of reports, pre-election reports that you have brought um, flowing from November 2018 up to this point. But what are the parameters? How did you gather all the information to arrive at this report? Yeah, so for, um, for the pre-election observation report, um, Yaga Africa had earlier, last year in November, trained long-term observers. Um, we have 822 long-term observers. Actually, so for every local government, we have one, one person stationed in the local government. Then we have 48 roving across the 36 states, including the FCT. Now, for us, what was important is for us for them to understand political ill issues and how to track and make reports. So, um, one of the things, the, some of the issues we're looking out for one are issues of um, political campaigns. So, the long term observers um, follow up political campaigns, rallies in their local government, and then they send in reports. Then we also look at INEX activities and prepar INEX preparations at the local government levels and at the state levels issues on PVC collection and distribution going on at the local government levels. And then we also do what we call violent monitoring, because for us, it's to build an early warning system that can help um, deter electoral violence um, towards the elections. And um, these observers send in reports every two weeks using their phones via coded SMS to the database here in Abuja, and we analyze and share the reports. We have special interest in participation of women, um, young people, and persons with disabilities. So we also track activities that um, relate to these special groups and then um, look at issues of hate speech, especially um, with respect to face, um, race, um, ethnicity, and then also gender-based um, hate speech or even age, um, hate speech based on, on age. So these are some of the issues we look at towards um, during the elections. And as we get the reports, we analyze and we share um, our findings with the public. So also feel... make recommendations that can inform policies and also help the electoral commissions uh, electoral commission as a plan for the 2019 elections. So a few of your findings reveal several things. Um, first, the, I mean, the president is pleased with INEC's preparedness so far, uh, but some opposition parties are not impressed. What were your findings? Uh, plus, we also know that some of your findings had uh, a violence, uh, you know, um, forecast for the elections. Tell us more. Yeah, so um, interestingly, INEC has actually been engaging at the local government levels and at the state levels. So if you see our report, you see that there's a lot of preparatory activities ongoing at, um, in each, each of the 36 states, including the FCT. And if you look at um, INEC's um, um, the schedule, out of the, uh, out of the 14 activities, we have just three to go. So when it comes to INEC preparation, we've seen um, a lot of activities ongoing. The PVC collection has actually increased, and with the decentralized collection, at the world levels, there are more reports of people collecting their PVCs. And um, this doesn't mean um, that um, there is no room for improvement because we still have some geopolitical zones doing better than others with respect to the um, efficiency of the Electoral Commission at that state level to conduct these preparatory activities. Um, however, our report has um, highlighted issues on violence and um, verbal, we have both verbal and physical violence, and um, vandalism of, of, of property. Then we also have reports on voter inducement. And so um, for the third reporting period, we saw more reports on voter inducement at, um, the, um, at the South, in South South region. They had more reports, percentage of reports coming in from that, um, from that particular region. And then if you look at issues of um, verbal and physical um, attacks, you'd have, um, it wasn't widespread when it comes to percentage of reports compared to the number of LGUs that we have. But well, we have some states still coming up. In the northwest, we have um, states like Kaduna, um, Kanu, Kaduna, Katsina, um, Sokoto, um, highlighted as in, part in our reports with states with 
most of these reports coming from that. For the southeast, you see states like um, Imo and Abia, you have reports coming from there. We have reports from Delta in the south-south um, region. And um, from the southwest, we have some reports from Lagos State, for instance. And then um, for North Central, I think we have more in Kogi and Benue State. So for, 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 the, um, for the violence, you have more reports coming from some of these regions. And for us, what is important is highlighting the local government within these states so that institutions like the security agencies can start taking action and addressing some of these, um, some of these incidents. Now, most of these reports on violence are actually connected to campaigns and rallies ongoing in the communities. So you'd see where you have more reports on campaigns uh, and rallies or party activities, there is a, you have more reports on, on, um, on violence or even vandalism of properties. But I think one of the things we highlighted the most was the purchase of PVCs, which we which we see as, um, as an indicator that could impact on the integrity of the electoral process. And that is because of the critical role the accreditation plays on elections day to ensure that one, um, there is more transparency and that um, you have lesser cases of multiple um, voters also, um, happening. So um, we've seen this report in, in the first, second, third report. And as we analyze the first report, it's also um, an issue we have seen highlighted, the purchase of PVCs. So there, there, there the will... reports, we actually had more states there will be Most a report the coming South before East the elections, um, region, before the elections uh, next month. Of PVCs, um, ongoing. So this for us is something um, we, we, uh, we think the Electoral Commission must look into. Finally, there will be a report coming before the elections, the presidential elections in February. Yeah, so we'll have um, the last reports would be on the week of the elections okay. um, because we would want to track and monitor what happens across the state at least till um, the, to, um, till the week of elections, by the Wednesday, 13th or 14th. On the 14th, actually, we'll be giving our final um, statement on the right. pre-elections environment and also highlighting emerging trends Thank that you, we Cynthia. think people should look out for towards the election. Thank you, Cynthia Bamalo, Director, watching the votes for joining us on the program.